you to everyone for joining us today for Library Ambassadorship and You. Um, I will tell you, we don't have any um, slides and any uh, content that we're going to be showing on slides. And my understanding is what we're going to be seeing is um, pictures of libraries rotating through our Florida Memory Collection, our fabulous uh, photographic collection. So one of the things that, um, how this sort of got started was we were having conversations the Florida Library Association Conference um, with some folks who attended the National Library Legislative Day in Washington, D.C. And one of the things that came up uh, during those conversations was the ability to share with each other. Um, and right now, while it's sort of hot and fresh in our minds, um, the things that have worked and things that may, maybe, if you're willing, things that don't work so well um, related to telling your library story, especially to elected officials. Um, is, if we think about on the federal level, um, there's generally an August recess, and so those uh, folks that spend a lot of their time in Washington, D.C., um, they should be headed home um, for the month of August. Now, I do know there's been some talk about having perhaps a shortened recess for them, um, but they will come home at some point. So that was sort of how we got started thinking about this topic, as well as thinking about the timing for this topic. The, the other thing um, is, is sort of keeping this fresh in our minds and, and, and having folks who attended, as I said, be able to share with you their experiences. This is indeed, though, an open forum discussion. And so while there are going to be a couple of folks who lead off the conversation, um, this is not in any way um, limited to just a, a certain number of speakers. So I, I hope you've brought your questions. I hope you've brought your ideas. I hope you'll be willing to share uh, when we get to that point. I do want to make sure that you all know, um, well, I guess and I should say I'm Amy Johnson from the Division of Library and Information Services. Um, all of the work and all of the conversations that we've been having related to this topic have been in association and in partnership with the Florida Library Association and working together with their advocacy committee and their legislative committee. So um, th these things are happening and conversations are happening related to how we all are become better equipped to tell the library story, whether it's on a local level, um, a, a city level, county level, or state level, or federal level. So that's really sort of what we're what we're talking about um, today. So I think we're going to kick it off um, with Renee Roundtree, if she would talk to us a little bit about um, her experience in Washington D.C. and and her other um, experiences in, at Washington County uh, Public Library. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, the reason there are no slides is because the whole point of this is to force you to actually take notes, um, because that way you'll actually remember what we talked about. Um, I was lucky enough to be one of um, the Florida representatives to go to D.C. to um, attend National Library Legislative Day. Um, now, I have advocated at my local and my state level um, for a while um, because I've, there's not really, I'm a small county, so there's nobody that's going to go advocate for me um, within our county because we don't have like a, depart a legislative department or anything like that. And so um, my Board of County Commissioners has been very nice and they think that it's kind of my job to do that, so I go off and do that. Um, but I'd never really advocated at the federal level. Um, for me, I'd always kind of thought that, you know, there are other people that are doing it um, that, are, you know, that they have a bigger library budget than I do. Um, they can afford to travel more extensively and, and really go out and advocate. Um, but when I went this year, I was, I, was, I was kind of taken aback. I was shocked and amazed to, to realize that there are not other people out there um, advocating at the federal level as much as we really need to do so. Um, I'm sure most of you know that uh, Florida receives approximately eight million dollars in uh, federal money for LSDA dollars um, and they uh, pay for a variety of services, um, some that the state library provides and then some through our um, grants that um, MLCs and other um, libraries um, actually apply for. 
But for me as a small county, you know, those dollars are, are valuable because I can't afford the curriculum for CSLP for the summer reading program. I can't afford for Florida Electronic Library. I don't have any other databases really other than what is provided to me from the state. So you, that money is critical for my survival in some ways. And I, we traveled to DC and I got to meet with several other uh, um, librarians from around the state and it was really great. And then we went to a one day training, right? And I was shocked at all of these people in this tiny room who are like who are representing their states and they're super excited and they're super geared up. And then, you know, I see a little tiny state like Michigan um, that has like rows and rows of people. And, um, and then I'm looking at Florida and we're one of the most populous states and there's only like eight of us. And I'm like, uh oh, something is really wrong here. Um, so I've, I've really thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. I'm like, you know, when I get back from DC, I'm going to definitely talk about it and see if I can understand why other people are not participating. But the training was excellent. I felt like I learned a lot that would help me not only advocate um, to our senators and our representatives, um, but also to uh, my state representatives, my local representatives, even to my board of county commissioners, um, because I really came away with some key tools that I felt were wonderful for, you know, advocacy in general and just learning how to like talk to people, how to like handle a meeting because sometimes it can be very intimidating. And then the second day of our National Library Legislative Day was days that I went, was the day that I went around and walked everywhere and, uh, and sat in meetings with staffers um, to talk about library issues that are important to us. Um, and it was just, it was fascinating. It was, it was great. Um, sometimes it can be a little nerve wracking. Um, and sometimes, you know, you're not really sure if they're even paying attention to what you're saying. Um, some people seemed very involved. Some people were not very involved. Um, it was just very intriguing kind of situation. But what really is important is the necessary prep work that you're going to have to do um, to, to talk about that, to set up those meetings and to make all of that happen. So like Amy said, um, there is a calendar that allows you, that lets you know um, what you, um, what the schedule is going to be. And I'm going to paste the link for um, the house calendar into the chat box. And then I'm also going to paste the link for the Senate calendar. Now, the house calendar is really, really very nice because they seem a little bit more tech savvy than the Senate side. And they have the ability where you can download a one page PDF. You can subscribe with your Outlook calendar, which is what I've done, which allows me to see in my Outlook what the current schedule is for the house. And that makes things a lot easier for me to track. Yeah, okay, well, is, is my representative gonna be in the district um, this week or is he in DC this week? What's going on? And then of course the Senate calendar is very nice too as well. Um, they give you just a basic one week thing and then also that there's a, a calendar format for the whole year if you, you wanna see that. And sometimes that is subject to change obviously, but generally um, it works pretty well. Another thing that you have to think about when you're trying to plan anything is interestingly enough, um, and I guess this is just to prevent random people for, from like contacting them, right? Is I'm gonna send you, I'm gonna show you this link. And if you click on it, and the reason I'm giving you links and everything is because I live in Washington County and I don't really have good internet in my county. And I'm not sure that I wouldn't just crash the system if we just, tried to share a screen, okay? So if you click on um, Lawson's, um, this Lawson um, link, right? 
He's a congressman. He's serving Florida's 5th Congressional District, right? But if you want to send him an email, what you have to do is you ha it's they have kind of a firewall, so you have to have a zip code to verify the residency and go to the next step. So this is where it becomes critical for everybody to participate. So since, Mr. since Congressman Lawson doesn't serve my district, right, it was very, very hard for me to try to get a hold of him to make an appointment because I couldn't even really get past his little email firewall. And realistically, the easiest way to contact a congressman is by email. They have a lot of staff who's constantly answering email and things like that so that you can get like a pretty good response time, right? But if you're not a, if you're not a resident of their district, then you can just kind of forget getting a hold of them. So you have to make sure that you can do that. And their websites are, are pretty elaborate. You know, they tell you everything that they have and everything. And that you want to make sure also that you're going to go ahead and subscribe to their newsletter. And I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, you know, do I really have to subscribe to another newsletter? Do I really need another piece of email coming in? And maybe sometimes you don't necessarily agree with the politics of your representative. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's just one more email. So, you know, maybe unsubscribe from that vendor list or whatever that you're not crazy about and pick up a congressman instead. So you email them, you know, you tell them, hey, you know, I'm in D.C. I'd like to I'd like to meet with you during National Library Legislative Day. Right. And generally um, your email will get forwarded to somebody called the scheduler. And the scheduler is the person that is keeping all of the appointments um, for that congressman. And right away, I can tell you, generally, you're not going to meet with a congressman. You're going to meet with a staffer. Um, but in the scheme of things, you want to meet with a staffer because if you can convince that staffer that what you're doing is a good thing, a wonderful thing, an incredible thing, you know, and really get them behind it, then when they go to speak to their um, congressman, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, you know, I had this incredible meeting with Renee and she was telling me about all these great things, you know, that they're doing at the library and they have aligned with all of your this, this, and this that you're currently doing. And hey, we really need to like, you know, maybe schedule a visit to the library so that we can get some good photos with them when they do their veterans event or something like that. So you want to make sure that you're building that relationship with that staffer because that is what you really need to have happen. Um, there are ways that you can, you know, build a relationship by even simply asking, saying, hey, you know what? I would really like, you know, like tickets to tour the U.S. Capitol or something, or, or you can even request a flag, you know, something like that, which is kind of a, a general thing that is not necessarily library related, but might get your foot in the door to talk with that particular um, office. So you get your appointment and you head in, right? So, okay, so... When we do, we're librarians, right? We do research all the time. So the easiest way for us to do research is to, you know, we just Google, right? We, well, we don't really do Google, but we do more dedicated searching beyond Googling. But like you can easily cyber stalk in some ways um, your local um, congressman. So they have, they always have Facebook, of course. Some of them have Instagram. Some of them have Twitter. Some of them even have YouTube channels. Um, but you can always, you know, like go looking, go scout it out before you actually make it into that appointment. You want to make sure that you're there, that you've learned everything else that you could find out about them. That, you know, in addition to the fact that they just happen to represent your district. Yes, Kelsey, info gathering. So you want to make sure that you're going out there and you're really trying to hunt, them, hunt down everything that you possibly can, right? Okay, and sometimes it's something kind of obscure. You know, if you are 
surround if you are lucky and you live like in a smaller community or whatever then maybe you've heard of them maybe you know somebody that knows them personally um you know that can give you some insight that you can talk to but you know just be prepared to you know really know what their their needs are what they're what they're thinking about you know and how does that fit in to what you provide right so my united states congressman is neil dunn um, he represents a huge um, chunk of the panhandle so he doesn't um, he doesn't manage to circulate very well because it's such a huge area so but I do know that he's really into veterans right so one of the things is when I talk to his office is I'm like well you know hey you know we really love veterans as well which we do um, you know, Washington County provides, you know, uh, access to um, internet and resources for veterans who are needing to come in and do paperwork or check their military email and, you know, because there are um, deficits in internet, you know, we are that place that is helping veterans. And then, so obviously, his office is like, oh, wow, that's great. You're helping veterans. That's what we're trying to do. So just like that, you've made that connection, which is really important. You know, and then so you so you go in, you talk, you 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 sell yourself on this. Right. You know, but one thing that sometimes we have a hard time doing is particularly making that ask. Right. And specifically at the federal level, the ask that we are always making is for funding for the Institute and Museum of library services, right? Because those are where our LSTA dollars come from. So that's a huge thing for us is that we always just make that ask, you know, and you say, hey, you know, I really, you know, would really appreciate it if the senator or congressman or representative, however, whoever's in front of you would support this, this, this. And if you have like a House bill number or a Senate bill number, that helps them tremendously. Um, so that they know exactly what you're making the ask for. And then you get up and you head out the door and you're like, okay, thank you very much for your time. And then as soon as you head out the door and you're headed off to the next person or maybe you're headed back to the hotel after you've had that meeting, is you need to be thinking about um, emailing or writing a thank you note as soon as possible and then follow up with that person again and again and again. Um, I had a wonderful experience this National Library Legislative Day. I'm super excited um, to be considering going back um, next year. And what I think I'm gonna do right now is um, turn it over to Sarah Hamill and let her talk a little bit about her experience. Sarah, are you on? I am, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for attending this webinar. And um, Renee did a great job. I really, um, I'm just going to kind of fill in some of the my experience a little bit. Um, but she did a good job of covering the um, whole event. It was really great. It was a wonderful experience. Overall, um, I think I learned more than I have in a long time. It's educational, it's fun, and it really a great opportunity to, to network with fellow librarians. Um, before I talk about my experience at National Library Legislative Day, I want to talk a little bit of, of my experience with advocacy. And I'll be honest, I've been a librarian for 17 years. And up until about three years ago, I was really just a really passive observer of the legislative and advocacy issues. It took me a long time to get on the bandwagon. Don't wait that long. It's not that hard to do. Um, jump in. Let's do it. Um, so what I would do up until about three years ago, I would email or call elected officials when I received messages from FLA or ALA. But I really didn't modify any of the messages. I just like would sign my name. I really didn't take a lot of time to think about what I was doing. Um, both FLA and ALA are really great because they let you know as um, if something's urgent, like we need to call today, we need to call by Thursday. Um, so and then so once I got those messages, especially the urgent ones, I would share that through social media and then go along with my business. 
However, about three years ago, it's a little over three years ago, maybe four years ago, I became an ALA counselor. And that's when I became much more engaged with and understood the process better. Uh, I work in an academic setting, so um, I don't have Renee's experience of working for, for a county and advocating in that way. Um, so I became much more active when I became a counselor because I understood better. Um, so when the opportunity to, to uh, attend National Library Legislative came up, I jumped at it. I said, yes, this is the next step on my advocacy trail. Um, as I said, it was great. My, um, it was great just meeting the a ALA leadership, meeting librarians across the country, all working towards a common theme to save library funding. Uh, I ran into a lot of co colleagues that I normally only see at ALA annual conference, so it was great to talk to them and listen to their perspectives and their state issues. And also, um, I ran into a lot of people that I'm friends with on social media that I've never met face to face. So it was also good to meet people that I know feel like they're my friends on social media, at least, to meet them face to face and talk about their issues within their state. It was a time to connect and really discuss the issues. Um, I did not attend the orientation because I did a lot of door knocking. Um, I went with the Miami Dade delegation on the day of the orientation. So I was able to really do cover a lot of ground, both on the orientation day and the actual National Library Legislative Day. Um, so, aside from the wow factor of walking through the halls of Congress, it was really fascinating to see the offices of the Congress people. I, I don't know, Renee didn't mention this, but I was like, intrigued. I learned a lot about them um, just by how they decorated their offices. I work at Florida International University, and a lot of our peeps have FIU stuff in their offices, so it was great to see. Um, and honestly, a lot of the people that I did visit with, I probably do not, well, no. I know. I don't agree with them politically, um, but as Renee said, we met well, mostly with the aides that we met We met with. Um, I will, they were all polite and interested in hearing the library message. Um, some probably more interested than others, but they did all ask intelligent questions. Something I found extremely surprising was that um, who's really running Congress? It's 20-year-olds. Everybody was so young. And I'm young too, but there, I mean, everybody was so young. So it's like 20 year olds running Congress. And, but they were all edu well educated and smart and um, polite. Just the overall experience of DC is such a great place. If you, I think everybody should go to National Library Legislative Days, especially this year, since uh, it's going to be happening during ALA conference in June in DC. Um, Take time to visit DC, see DC, and make a difference in our library funding. I just, it's not scary, it's fun, it's educational and enlightening. I think maybe prior to my getting involved with advocacy more, I would have been nervous, like, oh my God, I'm going to see a senator. Um, but now I realize, you know, they work for us and they're human beings and they want to hear our message. Um, it's really just, for overall, I think it was a bonding experience with um, fellow Florida librarians. I really got to know Renee really well, Charlie Parker really well, lots of different people um, really well. And I just, I guess I'll get on the horse a little bit and say it's so important to get involved. So even if you cannot travel to DC, because not all of us have the funding to go to DC every year, um, there is a virtual way to get involved through ALA. Um, they make it easy for us to be involved, to um, get the word out there because it's so important that we speak with a common voice, especially in today's climate. That's all I really had because um, Renee really did cover the nuts and bolts of everything. I don't know if you want me to cover anything else, Amy. No, Sarah, thank you. That was wonderful. And Renee, thank you as well. We we did have a larger Florida contention uh, this year in 2018 than we've had in the last couple of years. Um, but I appreciate you all sharing your experience. One of the things that I just wanted to reiterate um, is that the National Library Legislative Day is a um, an arm of the American Library Association and the training or the orientation that's done is um, through their American Library Association Washington office. And I've heard, as, as um, Renee said, since she attended that, um, several people say what valuable training that was. So I just wanted to make sure to, to throw that in the mix as well. Um, Lisa O'Donnell, would you like to add to the conversation? Our wonderful FLA Executive Director. 
Yes. Hi, thank you so much. Yeah, I just have a couple points. Um, so yeah, Lisa O'Donnell, Executive Director of FLA. Um, I'm happy to be a part of this and I appreciate everybody who is um, called in today and kind of listened to this. This is your first step. I mean, even if you have uh, lobbied or participated in the past, you being on this call right now speaks volumes about you care about this process. So I appreciate that very much. Um, I have just a couple of things, and Sarah um, noted this, but what's really important is that next year's uh, National Library Legislative Day will be held in conjunction with the ALA Annual Conference, June 20th through the 25th in DC. Um, I see many great things happening because of that combination. Um, you know, it, it, one of which is you can kind of knock out two really great camaraderie networking events at the same time, which means your budgeting um, will be, you know, it, it's friendly to your budget and the budget of your library. So um, typically NLD costs about $75 per person for a registration fee. Um, there's also hotel costs included, of course, um, in DC it can get a bit pricey, um, but you know, it, it's such an important thing to be a part of and having this combination of events, I think, um, is the perfect time to maybe suggest to your library director or your staff or your county or your board um, that this is the time for you to go and to really get involved. Um, which, which kind of brings up another point that I have come across. Um, I've heard, you know, that some library staff is a little hesitant to lobby um, because of any, you know, requirements preventing them to do so at their county level. Um, there are some IRS guidelines out there that allow private citizens to lobby. And even, um, you know, if, if we step away from the lobbying aspect, you're there in an educational role. You're the, you're the first line of defense for libraries in Florida. There's nothing to say that you can't tell your story to your legislator. Um, and so if we take the word lobbying out of it and you really just want to establish that relationship and get, you know, a rapport going with those legislators, um, you are more than, you know, okay to do that. Of course, you would want to <laughs> double check with your own general counsel if you have general counsel or your county's lobbyists, just to make sure. Um, but education is a huge thing. So um, do look at those IRS gu guidelines if you have a chance um, to see where you fall in those. Um, just a couple of other things. Um, FLA will obviously, we're here to help you in, in preparing for those um, appointments as best as we can. Um, and one of the things I wanted to point out was um, FLA uses a program called Engage. You might be familiar with it. It's a program basically centered around advocacy, provided to every a, a chapter, library association chapter in the U.S. for free. And it's an amazing tool. And so I am going to copy what Renee has done, and I'm going to put uh, the Engage site, uh, sorry, the URL in the chat box for you to kind of look at that. This program enables you to find your legislator quickly. Um, we have done pre-written letters for you so that if you want to invite your legislator to your library, you simply need to put in your address and up, up pop the uh, standardized letter, which you can then format and personalize. So, Again, Engage is a great tool. We will be using it more and more um, as we go through, you know, as we get closer to the state, Florida legislature um, and legislative session, moving into National Library Legislative Day next year. So um, keep that handy, that website. I think it's a great tool for everybody. Um, we also have a great lobbying team in Gray Robinson. Uh, they have offices um, all over Florida. They are one of, probably one of the highest regarded lobbying firms um, in the state, and they have a lot of friends, and they know a lot of legislators, so that is in our uh, best interest. So 
you know, if you feel that you're uncomfortable, you don't know where to start, they are your lobbyists too. Um, feel free to reach out to me and we can, we can make something happen for you. Um, and then I guess I would, I would echo what Sarah said when she mentioned that she, you know, going to these visits, she saw some FIU memorabilia or things on the wall, you know, find your commonality with your legislator. And all of a sudden it will make it seem like you are talking to a peer, a colleague, a friend. Um, they put their pants on the same way we all do, one leg at a time. So um, you shouldn't be wary of the process. This is a process in the Bill of Rights to petition your, your government is right there in the First Amendment. So it's one of the best tools that we can use to get our voice heard. Um, super important. Um, if you see a call to action from ALA or from FLA, for that matter, it means we've reached a critical point. And so, you know, we try to make sure we're not annoying you with emails and, you know, this and that. Um, but when you see a news alert or a call to action from from FLA or from ALA, it means things are getting tricky and we're down to the wire and we really do need that support. So when you see one of those, we're at a critical moment in that time. So again, we'll try and be, be aware of overloading your email inbox, um, but please do answer those calls, even if it's, you know, it's another item on your to-do list but it's one that can make a huge difference. Um, other than that, I think those are kind of the things that I wanted to point out. Um, again, I'm happy to help um, in any way I can. I'm happy to get our lobbying team involved if you need help. Um, please do look forward to um, a state SLA Library Day next year. Um, we are looking at February and we are putting an enormous amount of effort and thought into how that day and or days go um, to make sure we have the, the most impact and provide a really great camaraderie experience for our members to meet with legislators and their staff. So look for more about that um, soon. Other than that, um, Amy, is there anything else you'd like for me to cover or point out? No, Lisa, thank you. That's great for right now. Um, I appreciate so much um, all three of you sharing experiences and knowledge. Um, as I said, we had a number of people who went to Washington, D.C. to represent Florida. Um, not all of them could be online with us today um, to help with this presentation. So uh, sort of the, th the three folk who have spoken thus far, I, I really appreciate you taking the time and uh, to, to, to share your experiences and your expertise. So now we're at the point in this, um, in this conversation that we really want to open up the conversation and hear from you all about things that um, you've done or questions maybe you have about um, how things have been in the past or potentially are in the future, um, as well as, you know, anything that you've done locally that um, you want to share because it was a great success or I think there's always value in sharing things that are not a great success if you're brave enough uh, to share that because there's learning for all of us um, in sharing those lessons as well. So this is Melissa. If you guys have any questions or comments that you want to add into the conversation, you can either type them into chat or you can raise your hand using clicking the hand raise button um, so that we know that you want to talk out loud. This is Renee. While everybody's trying to think of their questions or whatever, um, I do want to mention something that um, Lisa did for kind of forgot, um, but that is the FLA's um, guide to days in the district. So maybe you're not going to be the, that person that ever goes to D.C., and that's okay, too, um, because you can find your legislators um, in your backyard. Um, like Amy mentioned, it's August is coming soon. They'll be back for district work weeks. Um, they will be out at um, festivals and parades and, and things like that. Um, they go to Chamber of Commerce luncheons and Kiwanis Club meetings and things. If, and if you know that they're going to be there, um, that's a great way for you to kind of meet them in an informal setting and say, you know, hey, I really would appreciate your support of public libraries or just 
IMLS in general. Um, and then also, you know, I actually, I read my emails or whatever, and um, this morning I opened up my email and there was one from Senator Rubio's office and he is having, of course, mobile office hours. And this is something that most of our legislators do. Um, what I always find very fascinating about his is how many libraries he uses. So right now, for this week alone, he has 16 places that he is going to be doing um, mobile office hours. And of those 16, nine are libraries. I've included the link for, for his website. So like this morning, he was some of his staff was actually at Wakulla County. And then by the end of this week, somebody will be at Volusia County at the Ormond Beach Library. So, you know, and it's, you're just going to deal with a staffer. Maybe it might be one, it might be two, um, but you can, you know, send them, an e send them an email and say, hey, I know you're going to be doing mobile office hours at so-and-so library. I'd really like to come and talk to you about um, supporting public libraries. And that might be a way that you feel like a little more comfortable. It's a good like kind of first step if you haven't done anything like that yet. Um, and then also if you're a library that has a very nice meeting room um, that or a study room or some type of place where they would like, um, you know, offer that to them, right? So, hey, would you like to, you know, do mobile office hours at our local library so that you um, build a really good relationship um, with that congressman's office. And that's not something that you have to like really like find money for a plane ticket to DC to do because they're really right there in your backyard. Perfect, thank you, Renee. Are there questions, comments? I'm looking to Melissa, she's looking for the hand raise. Um, there's if anybody, I suppose we're a small enough group. Yeah, the only reason I say hand raise is that there's a couple of you that had some background noise and I had to mute you. Sure. Um, so if if you've muted yourself or if you don't, if you're not muted, go ahead and speak up. Um, but I, I don't want to exclude anybody that was muted for background noise reasons. Fair enough. And we can hang around for a few moments and see if folks come up with questions. Or if there are any additional thoughts from Sarah or Lisa? Um, somebody wanted to um, know, are you able to provide a link to the IRS information, uh, guideline, the guidelines for county workers? Uh, yeah, th this is Lisa. So I'm going to put in the um, chat box a link, which is to the Council of Nonprofits um, org in their everyday advocacy. Um, it, it might encompass some county, uh, you know, worker type language. Um, but again, I, I mean, I would definitely defer to your, um, whether it's a county city manager or your general counsel, um, just say, you know, am I allowed to lobby um, for my profession, not for the county, but for my profession? That's this is Sarah. There. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was done. <laughs> now, I'm just um, going to say it's time to get involved if you haven't been involved so far. Um, I can tell you from my experience that it's great and it's not at all as nerve wracking as I thought it would be. And we've got a comment. Uh, so maybe we can have a meeting of those interested in NLLD and the FL legislative days in February that we might get on the same page? That's a great idea. If while we're in Tallahassee, we could sort of pull folks together who were who are interested in that. So um, Lisa and I, as the two organizations, certainly we can work on, on pulling some information together to be ready for that February event or potentially February event. Yes, definitely. And then I sort of, I foresee, this is Amy, I foresee um, a couple of messages um, as we move into June and people are making their ALA 
you know, probably a little earlier, but as we get into June and people who know they're going to ALA, you know, sort of as a reminder, uh, don't forget, you know, please do your part. Uh, so I think there'll be several times, but it's a great um, uh, conversation about getting people together so we can start having a shared uh, language. And, and you, I like your point about talking points. Yes, we do have, we do have those. And the nice thing is the American Library Association um, does provide uh they, they provide a list of topics. Um, I, I want to say that it, it's sort of it's and I'm going to defer to uh, Renee and and uh, Sarah. I think it was like maybe four or five major topics. And then there's information about that. They tend to put it together relatively late um, or later than than I would like for it to be put together. I think it's because that way they're being responsive in case a huge issue comes up. Uh, sort of at the last minute, but they provide a lot of information as well. And we we do uh, um, a couple of items related to how we spend federal funds um, in the state of Florida. So you'd have that as well. Um, another comment: have statistics and stories. It's really important to show how our value our value with data. Um, but to touch the heart with everyday examples of what libraries do. Right, exactly. And that's the importance of you being there, or folks from libraries being there, is sharing those stories. That's the great point. Great point. Well, and I would just say, you know, uh, Amy is right. The ALA does a really good job with the training, right? And so one of the best things that I felt that they did was they all provided us with name tags, right? And it said what state we were representing our name, right? But then on the back, it had the three, <laughs> the three talking points that you're supposed to remember, right? Because it seems like, hey, you know what? I know that we need to support IMLS. And I know that we need this much money or this much, right? But like sometimes you get nervous and you lose your train of thought. So, you know, I could just can pretend like I was playing with my name badge, but then I could actually read it and then remember to say it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's that training, that advocacy training is, is super, super important. And it's not just advocacy as far as, you know, politicians are concerned, because think about all the other ways that you advocate um, every day uh, that actually, you know, maybe you advocate for more money in your budget, but maybe sometimes you advocate um, for somebody to be a partner in a program with you, um, or you're advocating um, to convince someone that that you are, are capable of doing this or that. And, you know, that training can help you in a variety of ways that actually might not have anything to do with politics. But it is an excellent training, and, you know, it's nice to know that ALA provides you with a cheat sheet, so to speak, so that you know exactly what you're doing. And if you feel nervous, you can always ask them, do you use your library, and start talking about libraries in that conversation. And you learn a lot about people and how they use their libraries. And we've got a, a comment, um, even just our monthly calendars for events to show the variety of services and programs. Um, and a question, is there any information on the ROI for the IMLS monies? Um, not specifically um, an ROI on the federal money. The, the ROI study we have, which was pointed out in the uh, chat, is um, related to local dollars and, and ROI. Um, there it has been some work done by the Institution of Museum and Library Services in looking at the um, use of federal funds across the country because all 50 states and the seven territories receive some of these funds. So they've done some work, but it's not specifically an ROI. It's not specifically an ROI uh, study as such. But it, it, hey, Amy, yes. I'm sorry, this is Lisa. Um, what I can also do is um, FLA with um, the department works together on kind of an infographic. And so we pulled some of the statistics, again, not ROI per se, but a couple of statistics and put it in infographic form um, of where the federal funds were used in the last, you know, cycle of 2016, 2017. So I'm happy to put that in the chat box too as a link. Um, and if it's nothing else, it's just a nice handy dandy thing to have with you um, when you talk with your officials. Great. Thank you, Lisa. That's very true. 
And somebody pointed out the Libraries Transform campaign with Jamie LaRue and how about telling stories and sort of using language that's really um, engaging and, and may, I think we, as, a, as always a good reminder that we tend to speak a lot of jargon and a lot of acronyms um, and we can often describe things that are understandable by using uh, different language. There's a question, are there usage stats for the resources provided by the FEL and IMLS money? Yes. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I guess the question is that part of what, uh, part of the infographic that Lisa has shared would have some bit of that. Um, obviously, we have qu quite a lot of statistics related to the Florida Electronic Library. Um, in that infographic, it's aggregated to, I believe, sort of one number. Um, sort of at a real macro level. If you wanted um, something that's much more specific, um, then my suggestion is that you would talk to Dorothy Frank, who is our FEL administrator, because she can get down to the to the branch level and a specific resource if that's what you're interested in. But that the infographic that we have put together that Lisa was talking about has it as sort of a generalized uh, state level, and that's part of that infographic that was developed by F FLA. Yes, thank you, Renee. You all have been wonderful um, to be part, and, and I'm not cutting us off because we have another 12 minutes. Um, the the chat has been has been very um, engaging as well as the conversation. So um, I do want to acknowledge though that we're getting towards the top of the hour. And it's always a gift to find time, right, during the day, <laughs> at least in my schedule. I'm sure in your schedule as well. Please know that this is just the beginning of the conversations. Obviously, um, there's going to be more to come about the uh, Florida Library Legislative Day sometime in uh, what, we, what Lisa said, anticipate early calendar year 2019. We know we have... Um, National Library Legislative Day in June of 2019. Um, there's going to be information at the Public Library Directors meeting. We're going to sort of do a follow-up uh, conversation. That'll be in October in Brandon, Florida. Um, and there is a um, Public Library Directors, uh, FLA Public Library Directors member group um, on August 10th. And I would imagine that there's some uh, conversation about, again, how to tell our story, um, really this this whole uh, parcel, if you will, of how do we share the really great things that we're doing so that we continue to get the support we need. So lots of continuing opportunities. And I just want to put the offer out there. If anybody has any questions, they can feel free to call me or um, email me anytime and I'll be happy to respond. Um, sometimes I'm faster than others, um, but I am more than happy to, you know, sit down and talk to you about how you can, you know, go after your local representative. Thank you, Renee. Same here. Same here. I'll put my information in the box. Thank you, Sarah. Awesome. Any other parting thoughts? All right, hearing none, I think what we'll do is go ahead and say that the webinar is finished for today. Thank you very, very much to Renee Roundtree, Sarah Hamill, and Lisa O'Donnell. We couldn't have done this uh, without you. Um, as, as several folks said, um, stay tuned about uh, opportunities yet to come. Vic, I see Vicki has a question about a handy calendar for Florida legislature. Um, uh, Renee or Sarah, have you, or Lisa, have you seen anything that's quite, I haven't. Um, no, this is Lisa. Oh. I haven't seen anything yet either. Um, with with the session pushed a little bit further back into March next year, I think we are. We'll wait a little while <laughs> to yeah. see that. 
and plus all the change, all the turnover with elections coming up. Um, I think right. that, that things are and, and with, with a new governor. I mean, I think that they may be a little slower to release calendars. Um, but we, we'll keep our eyes open, Vicki. And once we see something, we'll do our best to share it with you. And Vicki, this, this is Lisa. Oh, I'm sorry, Renee. I keep oh, I would you. say, um, just be, just be, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Just be on the lookout for when your legislative delegation is scheduled to come to your county. And generally, um, that happens in either um, November or December, um, even if the session starts in March. So you want to make sure that you hit up your legislators at that point in time. And then so when you see them, actually in Tallahassee that they've already seen you once or twice. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Renee. Um, it will also have our lobbying team do a couple of webinars leading up to, you know, those kind of calendar type things and then get everyone kind of prepared for a uh, session coming up. So look out for those webinars soon too. And one last quick question. Is there a FL list serve slash email group for advocacy? Um, there, so there is a committee, um, an FLA advocacy committee, um, which, you know, we'd be happy to have anybody <laughs> join that. Um, but as we, as we get closer, um, we'll probably start sending out specific emails regarding advocacy legislator uh, information, that kind of thing. So uh, FLA will be sending it out. Okay, great. Thank you, Lisa. I was going to say that here at the division, we don't have anything specifically related to advocacy um, for, for various reasons, but we but that's good to know um, watching the FLA listserv as well as pointed uh, messages from FLA will be a good thing and things from the advocacy committee. Perfect. You all have been a wonderful, engaged audience, and we appreciate it. Thank you again to Lisa, Sarah, and Renee um, for their expertise. And I think with that, we will be able to get ready to sign off. Thank you all very much. Hope you have a wonderful rest of the week.